Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll call to order the July 2023 meeting of the Binghamton Traffic Board. It's July 13th, 2023. Uh, our first segment of the meeting today will be public, public comment. Um, we have uh, one person here to address the board. So if you could just come up um, and state your name and address. Uh, five minutes to address the board. The floor is all yours. And can you just make sure your mic is on, Robert? It should be green. It's green now. Is that working? Great. Thank you. I can tell. Um, my name is Robert Wandell. My wife, Kelly, and I own a Magica at 39 Court Street. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we're expanding into 37 Court Street. So the address is probably just going to say at 39, but it may change. But that's that's us over there right on Court Street. Um, we've been in business now. It's our 24th year down, downtown. Um, and apparently we have enough faith in Binghamton to expand, so we're doubling. Um, I spoke at the last meeting here, and um, I brought you problems because we have problems with parking enforcement and basically creating parking for the businesses down there, and I was assured that it would be looked into. So instead of bringing you problems first, I will tell you that um, the day after this, there was a car parked in front of my shop that had been parking for days at a time in that area. Now, the zone we're talking about is paid parking only, no overnight, two hour max. And so, you know, as you can guess, parking two or three days is a problem. So that person got three tickets and I have not seen that car yet. So I sense that. So I consider that a success. Those are more spots open for customers. And that's what that zone is designed for. Hence the two hour max. It's not made for people that live upstairs. It's not made for people like me that own a business. I park in the ramp and pay a monthly fee to do that. Uh, I inconvenience myself so that my customers can have the convenience of parking there. And I think all of us should work together, all the businesses downtown, to make that happen. So, yeah, that's the first thing I want to say was appreciation. Thank you for, and if you can get those words back to the traffic boss, who he's not. All right, that's you. Oh, all right, great. <laughs> great, I thought it was that other guy. So, all right, cool. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and I know that there is a, there's going to be some pushback and anger from people who feel entitled to uh, skirt these laws, especially the ones that do so on a regular basis, the regular scoff laws that think that they should um, be above the law. And I don't, and I, we've got agreement here last time that nobody is above the law. So just the pushback, there was on Facebook and Instagram, a post that tagged uh, the Binghamton Police Department, tagged my business and tagged Ellis Brothers. So when you get tagged, if you're on Facebook, it pops up that, hey, somebody mentioned you. So I went there and this is from Devon Michelle Beeman, who owns Dollhouse and the white Mercedes, that is a constant parking uh, issue. And she wrote, the fact that I own two businesses on Court Street, Binghamton Police Department does nothing but harass me on parking and is really mind blowing. I've quoted, and I can leave copies of all of this stuff here for you guys, right? They do a festival on Court Street, don't even reach out to the businesses to join, block the street and won't let me park on my street and continue to give me tickets. Then I come outside to a sticker vandalizing my car about I can't park there. So where the ex expletive can I park as a business owner that's here all day? A Magica, again tagged, harasses me 24 seven and I swear it's Ellis Brothers who just vandalized my car. I feel so bullied and belittled being a female business owner on that street. Um, so this goes out and I'm sure whatever Binghamton police person is responsible for Facebook uh, that popped up because they were also tagged. Um, there's a video too where she's complaining about that because she, because she couldn't park where she usually parks, which is a two hour zone. She went around the uh, old CVS building or well, she's Ellis brothers now and apparently parked in Ellis brothers owned parking spot and they put a sticker on her car or somebody did i don't know who did she assumes she's probably right but i don't know who did um, so she's accusing them of a crime and um feeling bullied and i just want to 
emphasize that like playing the victim card and the uh, uh, gender card is sometimes accurate. I don't believe it is in this case. I know that it's not. I would be surprised, honestly, if Ellis Brothers knew whose car that was and knew that a woman owned it. Not that it should make any difference, but my guess is just as I was in the first issues with this car, knowing that a car was parked inappropriately and in Ellis Brothers' case in a spot they own and was there all day and that person was not shopping in their store and was not one of their employees. Um, so I just, I guess I just wanna encourage the parking to continue enforcing it and uh, even step it up. Like this week, uh, day before yesterday, she parked her Mercedes out where she usually does because it's past July Fest and she was there uh, eight hours. Yesterday, she was there a little bit over eight hours. Uh, yesterday, she did receive one ticket, but one ticket if paid is $20. And if you get one of those a week, then that's $80. If you park in the ramp, it's $90. So if the purpose of the parking regulations is to get people to change and incentivize them to change their behavior, and as a person that's there 40 hours a week, not park in the two hour limited parking spots, um, it is not working in this case. So um, I, I'm hoping something can be done about that. Um, a week before that, there was another incident, which I was a little with the same person where she had been parked there four hours and Mike came through and didn't give her a ticket. He said, oh, she she paid. Things that she paid. And I said, okay, but she's been here all day. How did she pay for more than more than two hours? Well, I don't know. It's just paid. But, you know, we often come back and give people tickets if, if they're still here in over two hours. And he did come back and he parked in the street for and talked with Casey for five or ten minutes before he did much of anything else. And she came out and moved her car forward one spot. And when I talked to Mike and said, what's the deal? It's the same zone. He says, well, there's nothing I can do. She moved her car. If she moves it six inches, she's in the clear. I can't believe that that's the law in a two hour zone. I know that if you went to the kiosk, it won't let you buy more than two hours. And it doesn't ask you if you moved your car a foot or one space. So that's a question I would have, but I don't, does anybody here have an answer to that question as far as the law goes? Usually it's one of the. Um, I, I request an answer to that question about what the actual law is. I did call the head of traffic who was here at the last meeting and he said, I don't think that's the case, but let me check into it and I'll get back to you. Uh, he has not yet returned my call. That was a week or so ago. Uh, he's Yeah, he's been uh, off the, these past few days. Do you know the answer to that, Officer Brown? I will look into it to confirm. I'm quite certain that two hours is two hours for the entire zone. You can't move up one space. I'll look into it and make sure, and we'll we'll move forward with it. Okay. Right, and, and it is the belief of Casey and Mike are the ones that are writing the tickets that if she gets into her car and moves it, they can't give her a ticket. At least that's what they tell me. And that's all the information I have is what they We'll look into that and... Um... Right. I appreciate the updates on. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. And thank you so much for being here for me. Because I tell you, um, I've been fighting this battle for more than 20 years. And after the last meeting, stuff actually happened. I think that's the first time that I felt like it matters and it'll get improved and we'll get more parking down here. Um, and the parking that's supposed to be for customers will actually be available for customers and not for each business owner owning a spot there because they don't and um as much as you know i, I read um from this one person that owns a dollhouse <clears throat> she is not the only business owner or manager or worker that also routinely parks there for many 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 hours many more than two on a regular basis it's unfortunate uh i hope stuff gets done about all of them and that they take the responsibility of a business owner in a business community and park somewhere else so that those spots are available for my customers and their customers and everyone's customers. People that basically have business to do, that's two hours or less as the regulation site. That's it.
Thank you, Rob. All right. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And thanks for that. If, you, if somebody get back to me with an answer to that question, I'd be greatly. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Have a good rest of the day. Okay. So that will end our public comment uh, portion of the meeting and we can move on to new business. Uh, the first item um, on the agenda today under new business, um, this is a requested review for emer emergency vehicle parking on Chapman Street. This request comes from the Binghamton Fire Department. Um, essentially, they are requesting to make the west side of Chapman Street um, emergency vehicle parking um, only, um, and this is between Court Street and Pine Street. They're looking, they're requesting this uh, just between the hours of Monday uh, to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and they're asking for this so that um, essentially they can accommodate some of the larger rigs that come to do trainings uh, at the new fire headquarters. Um, the, the chief said those Monday to Friday, eight to four hours are typically when the trainings occur. So that should cover it. And then it should uh, free up those parking spots. Um, to the public, to people attending the Rumble Ponies games, uh, or whoever it might be for the rest of the those um, for the rest of the time. Um, and just as as background, if if everyone recalls, uh, the traffic board a few meetings prior had voted to add on street parking to Chapman Street. So these are all um, new on street parking spaces um, that will be striped once um, in the coming days. Now that 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 street is milled and paved. So any discussion or questions on on this? You say 8, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. were the hours? Yes, that's okay. the request, uh, Monday to Friday. Are they not training on the south side at their training site? I, I imagine that primarily that's where the training's happening, but uh, Chief Gardner said that there is a need for some of the rigs to be parking outside Fire HQ um, somewhat frequently, uh, but it just happens within those regular business hours. They have parking in the parking lot for um, for staff and, and other smaller emergency vehicles. Um, but this is just for when they require rigs to be at HQ is what I'm told. I just, I thought that the understanding for adding the spaces, the parking spaces would be for businesses and and patrons of businesses, which would technically usually be Monday through Friday during business hours. So are we creating those spaces without a purpose? So um, primarily the impetus for adding the on-street parking there was for the residents in the Pine Street area um, who had reached out about the temporary no parking because of the fire station being built there. Um, so they had lost a few spots. Um, we kind of brainstormed and figured out that we could add on street parking to Chapman Street when the DOT turned that over to the city. Um, most of those on street parking spaces will um, be available to residents and, and businesses. The fire department is requesting just the section from Court and Pine Street. Um, and I'm not against narrowing that further if it, if it accommodates the, the fire department's request. Um, but it's just that one block on the west side. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, if if not, I'd look I'd look for a motion then to um, make the uh, west western portion of Chapman Street between Pine and Court Street emergency vehicle parking only um, Monday to Friday eight to four p.m. Is there a motion? Motion. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Okay, uh, the next item under new business, um, this is 92 Park Avenue, and this is a, re a request from uh, Dr. Burling in the planning department. Um, so, you know, I think this request is twofold. It's for the crosswalk on Cross Street and then the removal of an, a 15 minute parking sign in front of the building. <clears throat> yeah, so the minute parking sign is there from when there was a business a long time ago not sure when um she'd like that removed and then she wanted the board to look at a crosswalk on cross street uh 
the early discussion that that was not a good location, um, according to engineering um, and I think BMTS. Uh, so <clears throat> maybe an alternative location nearby could be uh, figured out for where a crosswalk would work because the nearest crosswalk is is uh, over a block away. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think Sergeant Music reviewed this previously, but um, I'm not sure if he has since we first discussed it. Um, what was the location? So it's in front of 92 Park Ave. And um, is it closer to Hotchkiss Street now, Tito? The, I, I think oh. that the best way to um, to maybe proceed with this is to have the traffic division go out and um, look and I maybe identify if there is an area over there that makes sense for a crosswalk. Okay. Um, cause that's, um, one of the issues was low visibility, um, coming off cross street. It has that sort of strange triangle, um, right near the building at 92 park. Um, so if traffic could just review and see if there's an area that makes sense for a crosswalk, um, to help pedestrian safety over there. Okay. He did, Sergeant Mojic did leave notes on that that there he did go over there wasn't immediately anything that looked like a good place to put a crosswalk okay um i don't know how much further we could get into that we can go out and do some measurements okay um but it looks at first he has notes here that park in hotchkiss is probably if it's not already there that would be the closest okay okay um do you think that works, Tito, if we have traffic, take a look at it again? Yeah, um, that works. And I mean, Hotchkiss, is, it's on the same block. It's it's better than than nothing. Okay. Um, and then, um, Officer Brown, if you could, when traffic is out there, can you just look for that 15-minute parking sign, too, and whether that makes sense yes. um, to remove it? And then this we can table to the um, August meeting. Um, okay, I, the, um, the next item on the agenda is traffic board determination. Um, we had a request for a four-way stop between Julian Street and Johnson Street. Um, I know BMTS is going to go out with traffic to look at that area. Um, our rep from BMTS isn't here today, so... Um, this is another one that unless anyone objects, I'd, I'd suggest just tabling that until August. Um, the conversation from the last meeting was that it looks like it could warrant a four-way stop, but they wanted to go out and do that, that final review. Um, so unless anyone objects, I'll, we can table and I'll follow up with BMTS for ahead of the next meeting. We just get a vote to table. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I should have done that with 92 Park as well, right? Um, so uh, we'll start with 92 Park. Is there a motion to table? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then a motion to um, a motion to table the four-way stop at Julian and Johnson Street. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thanks, Edo. Um, okay, the uh, next item, 25 Jerome Avenue, um, a requested review from the planning department. This came to traffic board at our May meeting where we approved the um, addition of a 20 foot apron in front of this property. Uh, my understanding is that uh, this this item clarifies the location of the apron. Is that right, Tito? That it's on the requested to be on the, on the northwest side. That's correct. Yeah. So looking at the house, the the apron will be expanded to the right, which is the the northwest direction. Okay. Franco, I think Ron said that um, engineering was out and had had looked at that or had okayed it. Yeah. Okay. I I don't know. I, I could. I haven't heard anything. I, I think that that was the case. Yeah, they, they went out um 
and they looked at it and they were okay with it. But when they spoke to the property owner, she clarified that the direction of the expansion was wrong on the drawing that traffic board had previously previously reviewed. So Ron wanted to come back just to make sure a traffic board was okay with moving it in the other direction. Okay, understood. Any other discussion or questions on this one? Okay, then I would look to, I would look for a motion to approve uh, this clarification as outlined. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and then our last item on the agenda, um, this has been a holdover um, the, from, from the last meeting a request from the Family and Children's Society for a, a crosswalk connecting their properties. Um, this is where uh, the organization is um, expanding their building on Main Street. And as part of that project, um, they are um, creating a, a surface parking lot across the street. Um, I, I kind of looked into this further. I've mentioned in the past that the city has a consultant that's working on some pedestrian safety improvements on Main Street. This location would be included in it. Uh, I think at this time, we we want to wrap this request into the broader project on Main Street. Um, and uh, I just need to have a follow-up conversation with the Family and Children's Society. Um, so Tito, I don't know if it makes sense to, to table this until the next meeting or just kind of indefinitely at this point? Um, you could table it or you could just deny this request with the okay. understanding that the city will take care of it. Okay. So you're denying their request to strike their own crosswalk, essentially. Okay. You, how you want to do it. Okay. Any thoughts or preferences? I would say then um, let's table it to the August meeting. I can have a conversation with family and children and just let them know that that's uh, the direction we're moving in. And it gives them an opportunity to give us additional feedback if, if they need to. Um, so uh, I'd look for a motion to table to the August meeting. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No add-ons or other business today? Okay, then I would look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.